Hi everyone and welcome to this presentation of our TVCG paper entitled Half Space Power Diagrams and Discrete Surface Offsets. Our work takes place in the context of digital fabrication. Even with recent advances in the technologies, 3D printers often have a limited feature size to the object that they can print. In practice, models are often rasterized at the printer resolution prior to being sent to the machine. In this context, morphological operations can be used in order to simplify the input shape, clean up thin features, or hollow out a model prior to fabrication. In this work, we seek to efficiently compute the result of morphological operations directly on a discrete volume re representation that can be used to feed a 3D printer. The rest of this talk will be organized as follows. First, we will briefly present some of the most relevant related work in this area. Then, we will describe our method for surface offsetting, first in 2D and then in 3D. And finally, we will present a few results and discuss the benefit of our method. Existing methods for computing surface offsets fall in essentially two categories. The first category operates on a triangle mesh and seeks to compute the Minkowski sum of an input surface with a spherical kernel. These methods rely on exact arithmetic in order to be robust. While they can be expensive, this method also provides the most accurate results. The second category of operations are based on volumetric representations of the input shape and often approximate or resample the input shape before reconstructing the final surface. For example, in the work of Wang and Mandocha, the author computes the dilation of a shape discretized by sampling along three orthogonal directions and recombines the results of the dilated point samples. In 2015, Martinez et al. presented an offset method that approximates the result of the dilation by the Minkowski sum of a series of segments in multiple directions. Those approaches have in common that they operate on a discrete representation of the input volume called deck cells or layer depth images. Conceptually, if you th throw a bunch of orthogonal rays on your shape and record the intersection events in and out, you will end up with a discrete representation of the volume, which can be stored compactly in a 2D array at the desired resolution. This representation is often more compact than a voxel grid, and slightly more costly than a 2D image. While layer depth images combi often combine samples from three orthogonal directions, in this work we are interested in a single view Dexel representation, which can be sufficient for 3D printing purposes. There are several advantages to using deck cells in the context of 3D printing. First, this is a compact representation of the input shape, so it scales well to high resolutions. Second, you get a higher precision on the z-axis, or in the direction on which you throw the rays, as opposed to a 0-1 voxel grid. Another essential point here is that the, this is the discretization that corresponds exactly to what you send to the printer, which leads to a more faithful representation of the printed volume. And finally, this data structure leads to several efficient algorithms, for example, for the detection of support points. There are some drawbacks as well. For example, there is a sampling bias along the direction in which you throw the rays. And since this method, this data structure is not as popular as voxel grids or meshes, we have fewer tools at our disposal. With our approach, we seek to perform morphological operations, such as dilation and erosion, directly on this Dexel data structure. The key idea behind our method is to leverage a Voronoi diagram formed by the segments in the input Dexels and use a sweep line algorithm to compute the ray segments for the dilated shape directly. Given an input shape, we first compute the corresponding Dexel data structure. The 
Then we want to compute the DEXL for the dilated input segments as shown in the figure here. In order to do that, we will rely on a Voronoi diagram formed by the input segments and directly compute the DEXLs for the dilated shape. Before we go any further, I would like to provide a short reminder on Voronoi diagrams. Given a set of n input seeds, a Voronoi diagram will partition the space into cells based on which point in space is the closest to each seed. In 2D, this can be interpreted as the orthogonal projection of cones placed on each input seed, as illustrated in this video. Now, what happens if instead of a full cone, we use only half of a cone? Then we obtain what is called the half space Voronoi diagram. Here you can see the backward and forward Voronoi diagram formed by our input seeds. The importance of this concept will become more clear later on when I explain the details of our three plane algorithm for surface offset. Finally, note that this concept applies to any shape, not just point seeds. In this example, we show the half space Fournoy diagram formed by a set of segments, which in this case are the parallel rays obtained by discretizing the input shape into texels. Now, to compute the result of a deletion from a set of input segments, we use a sweep line approach and separate both the forward and backward offsets into two separate sweeps. Given the forward Voronoi diagram of the input segments, we advance a sweep line along the y-axis and use an implicit representation of the forward Voronoi diagram to compute the dilated rays on the current sweep line. In practice, we only need to record the set of seeds that are actively contributing to the Voronoi diagram on the current sweep line. And we build the dilated rays on the fly as we advance the sweep line. Now, I want to give a bit more details on the sweep line procedure. As we advance along the sweep line, we maintain a list of active seeds which contribute to the dilated rays on the sweep line. This can be stored in a simple STD set in C++, for example. And then, when we reach an intersection event, for example, the red dot in this picture, then we can remove the central segment from the list of active seed, as the two segments on the left and the right will now be closer to any point on the sweep line. Those intersection events are easy to compute, as they are the intersection of piecewise second order polynomial curves. Finally, we need to combine the result of both the forward and the backward sweep. This can be achieved by performing a CSG union on the two half dilated shapes, which is easy to do on a Dexel data structure. Now that we have an algorithm for computing the dilation of a Dexel in 2D, we need to explain how to extend this method to 3D. We observe that the dilation of a point in red on the picture can be separated into two steps. First, the dilation of the point into a segment along the y-axis. Then, the dilation of each point in the segment by a variable amount on the yz plane, in green in the picture. The result will be a union of variable length disk, equivalent to the sphere that would be obtained by dilating the original point in 3D. In order to dilate each seed by a variable amount, we modify our previous sweep line algorithm to account for the difference in target radius for every seed. In practice, this means that we no need to consider a power diagram instead of a Voronoi diagram in order to partition the 2D plane of each slab where the second dilations will occur. A power diagram will partition the space into cells based on the square distance to each seed plus an additional weight that is different for every seed. 
If we remember our previous analogy with the cone and the Voronoi diagram, the equivalent for a power diagram would be to use a parabola centered at every seed and lift them according to the weights associated to every seed. However, there is an additional difficulty here. The power diagram for a set of line segments can be very complicated, with cells that are split into multiple connected regions. To keep the implementation simple, we separate the second dilation into two operations. First, the dilation of each segment endpoint using the power diagram described earlier. And second, the Minkowski sum of each segment with an orthogonal segment in the direction of the sweep. For more details, please refer to our paper. So this concludes the technical part of this presentation. I will now present some of our results and discuss the advantages of our method. In this slide, you can see the result of an erosion operation with different grid sizes. Note that an erosion can be viewed as the result of a dilation that is performed on the complementary of the input shape, which is something that is very easy to do in our setting. And while the timings do increase with the resolution, it is important to note that they stay proportional to the number of pixels in the 2D array that support our data structure. More advanced morphological operations, such as opening and closing, can be computed by chaining elementary operations, as you can see in this figure. Openings and closing can be used to guarantee a minimum feature size or a minimum void size, depending on the target application. In this slide, we show some qualitative results on the surface quality. One advantage of our method is that it computes an exact offset of the input decks. As such, our results exhibit a good surface quality if the input shape was sufficiently well sampled. The host of distance between our result and previous work is shown below the zoomed pictures. For a more detailed comparison with previous work, please refer to our paper. In terms of timing, I want to highlight that one key advantage of our method is that it scales well with larger dilation radius. Indeed, the complexity of our sweep line algorithm does not depend directly on the chosen dilation radius. There is still a slight increase in cost due to the fact that a larger dilation radius will generate more segments in the output volume. Our algorithm is also trivially parallel, as the dilation along each direction can be performed in parallel for each slab of the input Dexel grid. And while our implementation is CPU only for now, we can already process inputs at larger resolution than what can be achieved by previous methods. Before we wrap up, I want to reassess a few key aspects of our method. Texel are an ideal representation for 3D printing, since we can match the resolution of the 3D printer at a very low cost. In this context, our method can be used to clean up thin features or to thicken a hollow model that are being sent to the printer. There are a few limitations to our method. Primarily, the uneven sampling might be an issue if your goal is to extract a offset surface for all your applications. Our implementation is also CPU only for now, although it could be extended to the GPU. As future work, we can imagine combining this method with better surface reconstruction methods in order to extract a final triangle mesh. And finally, our work only covers the dilation with a ball, and it will be interesting to consider other structuring elements for the morphological operations. In conclusion, our method uh, computes an offset of a Dexel data structure via multiple sweeps. We leverage the power diagram of the input segments to compute the dilated rays on the fly. We decompose each offset operation into more elementary steps for simplicity. 
Our final algorithm scales well with the dilation radius and is trivially parallel. And finally, it can readily be applied to 3D voxel grid inputs as an added bonus. And finally, I want to mention that our C++ implementation is available on GitHub and I invite you to try it out.